Hello my soccer universe, what a Champions League e week this was, especially yesterday, what a Champions League evening with so many goals and so many comebacks, but there were also plenty of storylines on Tuesday. If you're a neutral, I think it was a whole lot of fun, however, if you're like me, uh, a Milan fan, I would even say if you're a United fan, you also might think that this was not the greatest week uh, of Champions League because it didn't really go your way. We have actually quite a few decisions already, uh, quite a few teams advanced, but there are still a couple of groups where things are not so undecided. Group F has already a team advancing, a little bit surprising, especially since it's Dortmund, which probably everyone would have not picked out of that bunch. But that one uh, has still slots open. We have uh, in Group H, we have a um, decision to be made. Group E, surprising, is already decided. And then, yeah, uh, Group A is open. And uh, we also have Group C, similar to Group H, where there's a clear favorite in advancing. So a uh, little bit to play for, but it's mostly Group F, where I think uh, Group F and Group A, I think where there's the most drama in there that also provided the most drama overall but again i said uh many many comeback wins yes yes there's some really improbable ones in in there so yeah i would say we'll get in i'm gonna go again group by group and i will start this time with tuesday um where the uh, let's start with group e where early on Lazio played Celtic at home. It was pretty clear Celtic needed to get a win in Rome and that was kind of what kept this game kind of uh, interesting. Overall, Lazio get the win to two Immobile goals. I mean, he came, came on, scores them and he has such a nose for goal. It's pretty impressive. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird that he's falling a little bit out of the, off of the team. And this win also meant that if Atleti win in Rotterdam, Feyenoord are out and in a group where I actually think Feyenoord I would argue are a better team than Lazio I, I would argue they find themselves out because they do lose the first game in Madrid they probably should, should have gotten something out of that here um, an early on goal through Cartoreda took out the wind of their sails um, Atletico Madrid just uh, being too ruthless and just being the uh, overall the better team the goal by Hermoso with the Barrios assist was a really, really nice one. Then you thought they geek, they get themselves back in, into it with a goal by Viva and then another on goal. I mean, two on, on goals and it's Atleti who also secured the pathway and take Lazio with them. Kind of surprising that Feyenoord are already out, but at least they have now. The Europa League, where I actually think this is a Feyenoord team that can do some damage there for sure. Let's move to the group of death, group F. Uh, and we have to start with... I would argue that on Tuesday was probably the best game, uh, which was between Milan and Dor Dortmund. It was wide open. I mean, both teams went for it, left and right. And Milan had the early break with getting a penalty, uh, a handball. I think it was um, Schlotterbeck who fell down. Um, I gotta say... Yes, by the rule, and so I can see why it's not overturned, but I feel it's a little bit weird, the penalty. Giroud steps up. It's a big chance to give the game the right direction for Milan. Giroud steps up and his penalty is saved. And then, just a few minutes later, Calabria dangles a leg out against Bino Gittens. Not necessary. It is far out. It's a clear penalty, and Marco Reus does what Giroud could cool not do. It's 1-0 Dort, uh, Dortmund. Then Milan was shocked. However, the more the game went on, Milan actually got control and created chances. Got an equalizer through Chuk Chuk Weise, first goal for Milan. Uh, Calabria had big chances. I think Milan were the better team, and especially in the uh, early in the second half, Pulisic, uh, scissor kick from far, far out is, is blocked, and uh, Loftus-Cheek gets past Hummels does not make the right decision and they were, this was the chance where you have to score. In the, if Milan score in that uh, period, and this is again the same story for Milan, the entire Champions League campaign, they do not convert their chances. They create, I think expected goal was probably Milan should be easily in the top two in this group, that they don't, 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 don't create. And then uh, Bino Gittens gets the go-ahead goal and Milan opens up a little, little bit more and at, at, at the Emmy. Scores a second one, just uh, a third one, just 10 minutes later. And that's that. Yes, Jovic comes on, um, hits the post, but then also um, 
Fulcrook does the same thing. And then what's even more damning for Milan is another injury. Malik Joe had to conquer, can come off with a hamstring and now you have no defense any, any, anymore. And things actually, while initially I wanted that Newcastle does not get a win and hoping that Milan gets a win because that would have pulled Milan and PSG in pole position. Newcastle against the run of play had the lead in this game. Uh, and were defending uh, staunchly with a last-ditch squad. Is a goal. I mean, PSG really creating many chances, but do not score. And then they get the penalty penalty. And at this point, the way if Milan loses to Dortmund, it would be better than Newcastle win at PSG uh, to keep them a little bit of better chance because then at the, uh, winning in Newcastle would have been enough. But no, it does not happen. It does not happen. And uh, PSG get an equal with Mbappé on a super contentious penalty. A super contentious penalty where I even wonder why Marciniak is pulled out uh, to watch this one. And then why is he not sticking with his decision? This was an absolutely ridiculous penalty. And to make matters worse for if you're a new, new Newcastle fan, um, yesterday in the Bayern Kopman game was a similar situation and this was waved off. There was a penalty game. It was the exact opposite of what was happening. PSG probably did deserve something out of this game because they were the much better, better team. They just could not convert their, their chances. And I think there were some really good saves by Pope in there as well. But the way it happened, that was not deserved at all. Group G is a kind of so-and-so group. I mean, uh, it was a really entertaining game between City and Leipzig, with Leipzig having a tunnel lead through Openda uh, in the, in, in the uh, first half. And you really thought, oh, do we get a surprise here? But then Holland and Foden, E, Igres and Julian Alvarez late on uh, get uh, the win. I think there was another Openda goal that was chalked off for a clear offside as well. Uh, the other game was kind of a uh, matchup directly for who goes in into the Europa League and young boys a little bit against the run of play earn uh, here the three points, uh, which means that they will uh, they have secured the third space. It was uh, an own goal and then uh, Bloom it was early in the second half. And so um, just a little bit more uh, how to say, a little bit more mature performance by young boys. Um, group H actually got interest because Schachter threw an early goal win against Royal Antwerp as expected. And then what Barcelona showed against Porto is just what Barcelona have been showing all season. Porto were a much better team. They take the lead through Pepe in the 30th minute. However, just two, two minutes later, out of nowhere, Joao Cancelo equalizes. Again, Porto, large, large, a better team, but it's the other Joao. Two Portuguese players, and I think both of them not necessarily <laughs> related to Porto, turned around Joao Felice, getting then the goal, and uh, Barca win, and actually are through on a night. Honestly, uh, this Barca team does not look right, and while they at advance, and probably as a group winners, uh, or they advance as group winners, uh, with a really, really high percentage there. I really, really, really don't see them uh, going further. Although, as a group winner, you probably avoid a tough opponent. So, yeah, there's a quarterfinal in there. And maybe by that time, Barca get out. But in this sh uh, form, Barca are not a good team. Absolutely not. They're atrocious to watch. And how often have you said this about Barca in your life? Uh, let's get over to yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, especially the early two two games. I mean, you both of them absolutely super exciting, super dramatic games. Uh, you couldn't make it up. I, I would argue these two games are better than the six that followed after, and even those were not that bad. Uh, let's start in Group A in East Istanbul. This was probably the marquee match match of the entire round. Although I would argue Dortmund Milan, yeah, was also in there. Because uh, against United, just because of the pure fact that United could got, could have gotten eliminated, and while Galatasaray really started out with full fury and fire, a United extinguished it quickly with Garnacho, and then a Bruno Fernandes shot really well taken. It was two 0 and you thought that United are cruising. You thought this year in the Champions League, United cruising away from home does not really happen all that much. And United actually played well, except for one person. Oh, no, no. First uh, goal for Galatasaray was a Hakim Ziyech free kick, former Ajax teammate. Uh, the wall opens up, uh, Galatasaray makes it, open up, and Onana bungles that one. It's 1-2. 
But still, McTominay re-establishes the lead right after they have, and you think it's all cruising. Again, a Ziyech free kick, and Onana plays beach volleyball there, and it's 2-3. And then Shosh uh, Shadev uh, Galatasaray even get a equalizer uh, through uh, Aktukoglu. And at that moment, I thought maybe Galatasaray can even push for for the win. But I have to give credit where credit is due. I think United played actually quite well, and I think they could have won it even. They probably should have won that game if it wasn't for their goalkeeper, who I don't know. He was so brilliant last year for Inter. Here at United, he's just bad. And things didn't really improve because now we have uh, uh, Copenhagen get a nil-nil at Bayern, which actually puts them a little bit in the driver's seat. Um, in a way, because as long as United don't win, they just need a draw against Garza. But, you know, it's better to have a win. So it's between those two who will advance. Uh, now United need to win at home against Bayern and need a draw between the other two. And I don't think this will be a draw. One of them will win, but you know, temper, uh, it's an 11% chance for United advancing. It's better than Milan's. It is better than Milan's, and that says a whole lot. Group B also was decided yesterday. Uh, also a little bit um, surprisingly. I mean, PSV, I'm wearing PSV, was the positive surprise. Uh, the other Gattachi in Fefina was, was, was the negative. Uh, and it did not start well. I mean, a PSV, as I said. Perfect in 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 the air division. A really really good team. Stars are well. However, uh, the chances then fell to Sevilla and Ramos gives the uh, Sergio Ramos gives them the lead with a really really weird weird goal. I mean he just uh, barely touches the ball, and this is ten thousand Champions League goal. The ten thousand goal of the Champions League. Then uh, Sao has a, a goal disallowed because there was a handball in in in, in build up. But at that point, and the Serie had a goal chance. Uh, it really seemed like uh, Sevilla is gonna run away with that, especially when Nasiri in the forty seventh minute make, makes it two 0 And all the good work that PSV put in seemed to go nowhere. How Ocampos gets himself a set off with two yellow cards in very short succession, and shortly after, Zaibari makes it 2-1. Then Nemanja Gudel own goal in the 81st minute, and then uh, Ricardo Pepe turn it around, and PSV win a big one, and that actually put them already on the brink of qualifying. They, uh, of course, own the tiebreaker over Lance, and as long as Lance don't pull another mirror miracle against Arsenal, they were through and there was no miracle because Arsenal just steamrolled loss and I don't I don't know Arsenal were good but a uh, good league us have been that flat I mean this was the biggest defeat in their history Harvard's uh, early on then the goals came coming Gabriel Jesus Saka Mart, Martinelli uh, then Arsenal after half an hour even stopped playing until Oerdegaard decides to take a nice shot and it went right in and then later on Jorginho gets a penalty from Odegaard, I think, even, because, you know, Jorginho has a little trouble with penalties these days. So, uh, Group B already decided uh, Arsenal first, PSV second, is the second, and then it's between Lens and Sevilla. Can Sevilla get into the Europa League? I'm sure they will, somehow, and then I'm sure they will somehow win that freaking competition again. I really hope not. We need another winner in the Europa League, but it, it's an interesting story. Group C, Braga, Union, Berlin, only a 1-1. One, one. Union even have, 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 haven't had the lead, and then Braga go down to 10 men, and still they're the better team and should have won this uh, match. However, this draw keeps them very much alive in uh, for the next round, because Napoli lose in a really entertaining game to Real Madrid, where um, as good as Napoli were in the game, Osimhen didn't start for, for some reason and had every, actually the early lead. But then Brian Diaz does what he all, always does against Napoli. Assists Rod Rodrigo, who is, at the moment seems liberal 1-1. And then a brilliant Bellingham header after Al Alaba Cross makes it 2-1. However, Napoli were in the game get an equalizer. Uh, had even the big chance uh, if Karatskelia's ball finds his way to all the Osimhen. But this was very well then defended by Real Madrid. Uh, I, th I think that his attack had, had, had to play better. If Napoli take take lead, it might get something out of it, but then they need to push forward because they kind of wanna get that win 
Although I think the winner are not aware that the draw was more or less enough and then the Real Madrid had many, many, many chances. Jose Lu missing uh, quite a few of them like he did already on the weekend. Um, and in the end, it's a merit mistake that uh, allows Pass to score from far out, although uh, the way he turned and so on was really, really good. And Bellingham even sees Jose Lu. Jose Lu very apologetic in front of the Madrid crowd and then he's actually pushed by his team. And, you know, let him celebrate. This is your moment, which I think was really nice. Which leaves us then with Group D, where Salzburg were hoping to get more points than Benfica because that would already secure them a third place. Uh, but it didn't go the way. Salzburg held on to a nil-nil draw. They had one good chance in the first half, but Real Sol then besieged the goal. There was a great Schlager save uh, lay, laid on on, on a, a Takekubo free, free kick, but they hold on to the nil-nil draw. Uh, but for a long time it seemed, okay, nil-nil draw, this means when we go in the last game against Mefica for the final Europa League spot, uh, we need to avoid defeat. Mefica had a 3 nil halftime lead in the in rainy Lisbon, all Joao Mario goals, and I was thinking, you know, um, I understand Inter have a big game on the weekend, Napoli played the B, B, B squad, but that B squad did not look right, I mean, they were defending was really relaxed and seemingly uh, Inzaghi, Kurt Kogan Inzaghi thought the same thing. And they turn it over and, 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 and they come back. Uh, I mean, yes, he brings on good players bit after bit, but even the, the, the B-squad get it to 3-2 with Arnautovic and Fratesi scoring the two, two goals in 51st and 58th. So in a few minutes, Inter had packed... Uh, Benfica back, back enough and then uh, they get a penalty in the 76 after Quadrado Tiram Barella came on. Alexis Sanchez converts that, that one. And suddenly Inter in full count, control, they even throw on then Di Marco and Laud, Laud, Romal Martinez, uh, play, Antonio Silva is sent, sent off for, for Benfica and uh, Barella even hitting then the, um, the woodwork. This could have ended with an Inter win, which would have been good for a Red Bull Salz, 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 Salzburg, but still. The situation in the group is now that, uh, you know, uh, Real Sociedad and Inter in Milan will play for first place. And then Salzburg need to avoid a defeat by two or more goals, which seems also relatively doable uh, as long as they keep it tight against uh, Benfica squad. Even when, you know, it's against the former coach as well. So, yeah, these were the games from yesterday. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, Winners and losers. I mean, it's a bit of PSV, Lazio. I mean, all those teams that that that, that they could qualify, of course, up up there. Uh, we see also that um, on the bottom side. I mean, uh, PSV are the winners, are the biggest winner. Uh, Fiorentina, the big biggest loser. Milan, Sevilla, Man, Manchester United. Even PSG are kind of low down. Porto should have gotten some 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 out there, but it's very Milan loss and Feyenoord, where is PSV, Lazio, and Dortmund. Kind of makes sense when you saw. Uh, the big winners. Uh, if you look at the overall favorites, I mean, it's still City, very much the overwhelming favorite. And I have to have, have to win at the moment. They just have to tune themselves to get on another run. Bayern, Real Madrid, Arsenal, Barcelona, Inter. I don't quite see Barcelona, but you know, they are, they are a big name team uh, in there as well. If you look at the upcoming rounds, I mean, as I said, it is. Uh, Everything in Group uh, B is not really worth watching. It's Copenhagen, Galatasaray, United, Bayern. I think that's really interesting. We have a head-to-head -head between uh, Napoli and Braga. Bra uh, Braga need, need, need a win. We have the first place for between Inter and Real Sociedad. And we have Salzburg and uh, Benfica going for the Europa League. And then, yeah, in group, group F, we already said it. It's Dortmund and PSG. PSG need to get some, some out of Dortmund and, uh, and um, Milan need to win in Newcastle to have, have a chance. Uh, if Newcastle win, PSG draw, then you see New, New Newcastle going, going through and, and so on. We also have another head to head between Porto and Schachtar, Atletico, Lazio. Yeah, this could be. It could sound so, 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 so good, it's for first place, but you know, we gotta see. In any case, let me know what you thought about this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!